Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Pinstripe Talks. We talk baseball 24-7, 365. So in today's, ep- in today's episode, we have a guest speaker. His name is Liam Wild. Liam, want to tell a little about yourself? I'm a proud Astros fan. Best team in the MLB. Been watching baseball my whole life. And, yeah, I'm excited for the, for the whole next season. Yeah. So uh, today we're going to be talking about Yankees and Astros and how the whole rivalry, rivalry and then some positive things about the Astros and some negatives. All right, Alex, want to take it away? All right. So let's get the elephant, you know, mention the elephant in the room. Two Yankee fans and an Astros fan. This is mixing oil and water. They don't go together very well. But I think at this point I've forgiven it, the whole 2017 cheating thing, whatever. Yeah. I've gone over it. I know there's people who haven't, people who are shallow and have uh, no sense of forgiveness because it's a damn sport. All right. right. Hold on, hold on now. We can all agree that the Astros possibly stripped away a Yankees title, though. No. No way. You're, you're forgetting, dude. It's it, 2017. It's the postseason Dodgers still. It's not the 2020 Dodgers. It's the 2017 Dodgers. I get that, but still, the Yankees were on like a run. That's when Todd Frazier was heating up. Same with Chase Headley. I mean, all those, all those like minor guys were all doing really well. I'm saying the 2017 Dodgers, the Yankees made it all. We were winning, dude. No way in hell was the Dodgers going to beat us that year if we made it. I, I, I think. Wait, was it like? Did they say if the uh, Ashes were cheating in the postseason or no? Or was it just the good regular season? It's, it's never been confirmed. It's uh, all the whole statement. What we got suspended for the whole statement was just. Um, regular season 2017 and like for like electronic sign stealing. And then we all know that uh, let's say judge does not forgive Altuve at all because he like, didn't he like say something on his Instagram saying like, congrats to Altuve. Like that yeah, he, t- he tweeted out. Yeah. Congratulations Altuve. You deserve it. You know, the MVP award. And then when that whole thing about the cheating came out, he instantly took out, took it down. And I'm pretty sure yeah. they blocked him. I don't know if he blocked him or not, he, but he it's been confirmed that Altuve was actually not part of the cheating thing. He didn't. He didn't. Altuve is completely not part of this cheating cheating scandal at all. No, he actually was very much against it. And every time someone would use a trash can, he would just stare into the dugout and just say, "Knock it the hell off." So, Absolutely. but it was kind of a douche move from Mike Fires, like a former Astro. That, yeah, that was that was a pussy move. That was completely messed up. Should he was a know. former Astro, and like, what team was he on at the time when he did that? The, yeah, Athletics. <laughs> athletics. Yeah. Yeah. He was the rivals of our team too. I don't know personally. If I were him, I would just let it go because that team wasn't going anywhere that year anyway. But there was no, there was no need for him to to do anything, especially because the Astros had stopped at that point. Yeah. That is Mike Fire. Who's taking his word? Yeah, dude, Mike Fires sucks. It seems like Mike oh, like everyone hates Mike Fires in the league, including Stan, because as didn't he get Stan? Yeah, in the, yeah he, he ended his he nearly killed him. And then Stan he threw Stan a hang curveball and that ball isn't short. Uh, yeah, that ball isn't landed yet. Well Mike Fires is a cheater too. It, no, I know he is. He's used pine tar. We yeah, see. you guys remember that no hitter? Uh, and his no hitter, his second no hitter. You can literally see him doing this to his glove. The whole time. The whole I time. Didn't, I didn't even know he threw a no hitter. Yeah, he did. He has He's two. Got a couple. He had one with the Astros in 2015, I think. And then uh, he had one with the A's. But, yeah. Oh. All right. Next thing I want to talk about is the buzzers in 2019 against Chad. Completely, completely fake news. Dude, then why would he say, do not take off my shirt and then run right to the dugout? It didn't happen. People need to realize you you got no actual, actual, um, like uh proof yeah you have no proof there's no and there's no clear um audio of what he's saying it's all just like you're reading his lips and you can say like like i have a piece on don't take my shirt and you might think that's true because that's what you're thinking in your head and you're reading the lips with that and you're like oh that makes sense and also he speaks spanish why would he be talking in english do you speak english he can speak english but why would he be talking in english I don't know, wasn't he also, like, gesturing like, like this, almost like, like, do not... He did this. Yeah, he, well, like, he did say, he was saying, like, don't take my shirt off. He was saying, don't take my shirt off, absolutely. 
but it's because of the tattoo, and that's been completely confirmed. He did have the tattoo then, yeah. They, he he did have it. I don't know, but I just don't feel how a high and away slider by Chapman is hit the left field for a You're point. forgetting that even Jose Altuve, who I'm either the same height or taller than, has a very strong stature. He's he's just one of the greatest hitters of all time. Okay, I don't he know. Really is. You're 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 over exaggerating it a little bit he, there. He's had one of the greatest contact contact batting average starts to a career. Well, ever. yeah, obviously he did, and but I, I wouldn't say he's one of the best hitters of all time. He's had a lifetime batting average well over 300, and he's been in the league for a long time. Yeah, but his arm is like dragging that. He's zero arm. He's a so second I, baseman. You don't need to have a good arm. Hitter. I said one of the greatest hitters. No, I know he doesn't. I know he doesn't have a. I mean, as a second baseman, like I think every single time he backhands in the hole, he just can't make it go at first. But to be fair, this season he really stepped it up. Yeah, in the field, he's he had some some really great plays this year. But he had like twenty home twenty eight home runs going into like July, and then just didn't hit one until like middle of September or something like that. So that happens. yeah, but like, we, we want to talk about today. Let's talk about twenty twenty. Where he put up, honest to God, one of the worst offensive seasons I've seen in a while, and one of the worst seasons. Yeah, worst season. I, th- I, you know, I just think it's not. It's it wasn't fair. It, it, it like it completely shot him down. I mean, I I would have well, done the same thing. Well, that's a good point because uh, wasn't there a rumor? I think you were talking about this, Liam, that how he was like, like not the he wasn't like completely depressed, but he was like like scared going into the box. Like, Questioning himself, like, is he gonna get hit or not, or something like that? Like, that yeah, was he was. I think, at, I think at one point, I, I, I don't know if I ever heard this, but I heard like someone near him, like someone who was related to him, said something about how he was just like really depressed and he didn't ever felt like going to the games and it was like hard for him to wake up every morning and stuff like that. I mean, just like imagine his mental state at the time, yeah. When I mean, he I'm was saying, one of the, the guy... most players in baseball and then everyone hates him and he didn't even do anything. I'll say this. As uh, any member of that 2017 team, any player from then probably was receiving death threats in the mail, let's be honest. Yeah. Definitely. So, was that whole thing? At the time, AJ Hinch was the coach. So, was that because of him or because of the players? Completely AJ Hinch. I mean, the players were were compliant. I mean, they they completely, you know, they they, they followed through with it. And then uh, there were some players like I've heard. What I've heard is that Altuve and Josh Reddick were the two main people that, and Tony Kemp. The three of them refused to use it. They like were the three that were like, "This is completely wrong. Like we're gonna get caught. It's not a good idea." Like they they believe in their abilities as a baseball player. And then the other ones, they completely just went along with it. But they are doing what their coach tells them to do. Yeah. And that is what you're supposed to do. You're supposed to listen to your manager. And that's why I don't think the players should be, you know, come out with that much. But AJ Hinch sucks. Total Wait, dick. That was the, that was the reason why Hinch was fired, right? Absolutely. Because and the general the thing is the owner didn't know about this. The owner had no clue this was happening. Mm-hmm. And the general manager claims that he didn't, but he was fired anyway because I mean, even if he didn't know, like if you're that bad of a general manager that you don't know your team is cheating, yeah, then you should be fired anyway. So, yeah, I gotta say, even before this, there was really no use for the. It would make sense if the coaches did this because every player on that team had was very like capable of having an amazing season. Like uh, Guriel was so amazing. All those players were so amazing before this whole scandal even happened. Yeah, and they and they proved last year. I mean, Guriel had a monster year, twenty twenty one. So much better. Not service slugger, gold glove, and uh, batting title. The thing I don't like as being a Yankee fan, though, like, like I see other Yankee fans around, and, like, how they were booing, like, Brantley and all those players that weren't even on that team then. That's just unbelievable. Like, people like like Brantley, who's just been such a respectable player his whole And, like, career. Kyle Tucker or something like that. Yeah, Kyle Tucker. Jordan in the majors then. Yeah, he wasn't in the majors. Jordan was in the Dodgers uh, – you know, he was in the Dodgers franchise when this happened. Like, he was down in their minor system in 2017. So, it's like. Yeah, I just don't – because they had nothing even to do with this. So, I don't even know why they're booing them. But. I think uh, it's just like they don't really even understand. And they just wanted something to boo at. Well, let's be honest. Like, 
normal Yankee fans as me and Brad very, very differently from Bronx Yankee fans, okay? You gotta, you gotta understand, like, you can't just hate the whole team as a franchise. It's one thing, like, hate up, like, I get hating Altuve because it's never, it's not confirmed yet, but, like, it's one thing to hate the players, but you cannot hate the whole team. Yeah, I think, because, like, people, p- certain people need to be held accountable. I 100% agree. I hate AJ Hinch. I think he sucks. Well, I mean, he also made some crappy moves in the in the postseason that year. He blew, he blew the 2019 World Series. Absolutely blew it. Yeah, because I remember, wasn't like Cole ready to come in or whatever? Yeah, or and was, they brought in uh, – That was terrible. They brought in Will Harris. And he gave up the home run to uh, Howie Kendrick. Yep. That was like the worst moment in Astros history. That, that was, was like the icing on the cake for ending the Astros season. That was awful. I mean, like they – the. Zach Ranke was pitching a gem, absolute gem. He was in the, into the sixth inning, I believe, and he had let up one run, and then he just pulled him. And mm. instead of throwing in Cole, which was – he was completely warm in the, in the pen, he puts in Will Harris. Will Harris comes in, shits the bed, and then, and then he doesn't even put Cole in. Cole never came into that game. Sounds it's like seven. a loose man in the past. Done that now, Brad. Wait, yeah. But was that game – that was game seven, right? That was game seven. Yeah. So what was he even saving for him? Because it, it would make sense if it was game six and you guys were, like, up again because then you could, he could, like, pitch the next game. But Yeah, and like, he was a free agent next year. Who cares if it, he blows his arm out? Yeah, exactly. All right. Do you want to move on to, like, Correa or, like, another player? Sure. All right. Correa. Uh, how do I describe him? Like – 2017, I obviously hated him, or whatever, 2018, whenever the whole thing came out. But now, last year, that proves what he can do. Like, amazing field goal. That's amazing. the best shortstop in the league. Yeah. Oh, 100%. And what do you second, think last I, think, year? I think he is the second best shortstop in baseball. I think Fernando Tatis is one, and then, and then Correa. And if Tatis moves to the outfield, then Correa is the best, at least for now. I'm trying to think of other uh... – Possible I think I think Trey Turner's up there. Trey Turner's up there. He's he's a really like not talked about player in the league. He should be. So. Yeah. Yeah. He's he's the fastest player in baseball. There's no way to deny it. Yeah. He's, he's kind of like a five. He's literally like a five tool hitter, but he doesn't have like that much power. But he can still have a power. Right. No, he he's, he's, he's a great bat. Um, he can he can control the field pretty well. And also, you need to consider the fact that he played second base big amount this season he was not a primary shortstop mm-hmm. i mean Correa yeah. was out there every day and he was just an incredible defender all year i said this before um i said it when we had brandon on here yeah uh when we talk about Correa, he is you know he's got the pop he's got fielding whatnot but the only concern i would have with him is how long can he stay in the field that's uh, it's always been a big problem is his health and look, us Yankee fans, we sympathize with that. We had to deal with Judge and Stanton, with them being yeah. injured all the time. But well, uh, imagine, there was a year for the Astros. It might have been—I don't remember what year it is—but like literally everyone was injured on the Astros. Yeah, and I think it might have been 2018. But I remember like one year everyone was injured. And same with the Yankees. Like Yankees and Astros just can't seem to stay healthy on the field. It's true. I mean, it's. It's rare when you'll have an Astros team where everyone's out there. I mean, same with the Yankees, too. Yeah. Because Aaron Hicks always down and get injured. Same with Judge and Sam, but they didn't get injured this What's year. With Aaron Hicks? Is he coming back next year? I hope not. You hope not? No. What I was saying in the previous I, video is no. I was saying give Aaron Hicks two more years. No. See what he's capable of doing. If he does nothing, keeps on getting injured, then just bring Jason Dominguez up. I, uh, mm. Is Jake, Jason Dominguez ready to go this year? No. No, God, no. He's got at least another, like, two, three years down in the minors. Like, I think he was just called up to low A this previous year. Yeah, he's only, I think, 18 years old. He's not even 19 yet. Hey, man, you, you never know. I mean, Juan Soto came up at 19 and had, like, one of the best seasons. All right, actually, bringing up Soto. Can we just talk about that his brother, who is 15 years old, just got signed to the Nationals? We just talked about that real quick. And apparently he has a harder exit velo than than Juan Soto. So I'm scared. You said he's a switch hitter, right, Alex? Yeah, he's a switch hitter. 
That's if you're a Mets fan, I am sorry for the years to come. <laughs> if you're a Mets fan, I'm just sorry as a whole. Oh, yeah. I mean, that's just, like, depressing. If they don't do something this year, then they're done. They literally had the highest contract in baseball. This is obviously Scherzer. They got Marte. They got Canna. They got uh, – what was his name? Eduardo. Eduardo. Yeah. Like, what more do they need then to be a good team? It's just – I don't even know what it is then. They, they, can get, they can have Mike Trout in center, and they'll still finish under 500. It's just crazy. I, I mean, I think they're going to end with, like, an 82-80 and 80 record, and then they're just not going to make the playoffs. They're going to miss the wild card by, like, three games. As the, mo- as the saying goes, the Mets are just going to met. Yeah. Mets are going to met. And the thing is, I think they're going to start the season, like, well ahead in the NL East. Like, I think before the All-Star break, they're going to have a nice lead, and I think they're going to get really crapped on with injuries. Well, that That's happened. happened this year. Yeah, I about to say, this happened, happened this year also. They so were, I, I think sure. DeGrom just can't stay healthy. That is a big factor for him also. Yeah. I mean, every every time DeGrom goes out there, they have just like a way better chance at winning. Well, here's the thing with DeGrom. This is like, it felt like every time. He'd go out there, almost throw a perfect game, and after he gets taken out, injured. Next start, comes back. Oh, yeah, he's injured again. Yep. Mm. Like, I feel like after every start, he found some way to end up on the I.L. All right. Going back to Correa. Liam, where do you think he will end up? I would have said the Tigers. You would. like so I before the Tigers, they signed Baez. They offered him a contract. They offered Correa a contract. He yeah, but they signed Baez. I know they, t- but Correa turned it down. That was the thing. And I don't think the Cardinals are going to get him. Oh hell no! And I mean, the more I look at it, it. Really looks like he's going back to the Astros. No, um, I don't. I don't think so, man. I'm sorry. He's made it perfectly clear. I am done with Houston. I'm. He never said that. Gone. Never said that. Gone. Yes, he has. He said. Yeah, I don't know if he really never said. I am done with Houston. He said after this year, I'm gone. Never said that. I'm back. Gone. Forget. I don't think he did say that, but yes, he did. He did get a new agent, and that agent. Was Garrett, wasn't, wasn't he Garrett Cole's agent when he signed with the Yankees? Yeah. So Scott Boris is everything that's wrong with He's the greedy. Field. Also, I'll give that. Scott Boris is extremely hey, greedy. Boy. But in 2019, he drove he in. He represents like 90% of the players. I think that's so though. dumb. Wait, wait, what is it, Liam? Scott Boris represents like, oh, like well over half of the league. And oh, I, yes. I think that's just like, yeah. Well, he represents well over half of like the people who are – like settled MLB players, like people who like yeah. have been in the league for a long. If you've been in the league for like five plus years and you definitely have like some promise, he, you're, you're signed to Scott Boris. He finds a way to, because everyone knows that he gets the best deals. He gets the yeah. best deals. Okay. Right. All right. Do you want to move on to Verlander now? What's there to talk about? He's coming off for the young this year. See, I, I, thought, thought, I really thought he was going to the Yankees, man. No. I thought. I mean, there was a possibility, this but I thought he was going back to the I don't think like you guys thought he was going to the Yankees. They offered him a contract, didn't they? I mean, obviously they did, but who wouldn't, who wouldn't offer Verlander a contract? The man's like one of the best. Like two, three teams who did. I didn't, I, didn't, I didn't even know the Yankees offered him a contract. They offered him yeah. a one deal. Did the Tigers? No. No. I, I, I mean, I, I didn't think he was going to the Astros. And it's still not official. Oh, no, it's not? No, the whole thing got got uh, screwed by the whole um, whatever it's called the the whole lockout. Yeah, but um, it's it's like pretty. It's not gonna fall through. I don't think. Yeah, no, I I thought it was finalized to be honest. But uh, remember last year with Brantley, how the Blue Jays signed him, and you guys just like picked him up last second. That was like, hilarious. Like right after that, you guys just. Like, hey, can you him. imagine that the Blue Jays got away with getting Springer and Brantley? I would have. It was the same day too. Springer yeah. signed to the Blue Jays, and then like an hour later, I got a notification that says uh, Brantley to the Blue Jays, and I was like, "That was that would be the it. downfall of the Astros." Oh, now, now I hate the Blue Jays, and then it turns out he like completely finessed the Blue Jays, and he just went back to the Astros. He went like weave. Yeah, literally. I mean, that was that was crazy. And Brantley's just so good. He's such a good hitter. I know. Yeah. Like like before the All Star break, he was. Insane, and he's, I, he didn't necessarily get cold, but he definitely had a. He he slowed down a little. He's yeah, 
He's just so consistent. That's the thing. He's so consistent. I mean, like, I think I think he led the league in multi-hit games last year. If not, he was, like, top five. Like, the players in this league right now are, like, so inconsistent. And, like, like Harper, you have no idea what you're getting. You're either getting an MVP year like you did previous or, like, a batting 200 with, like, 20 home runs a year. Like I a- think Harper's, Harper's going to be good. I think Harper's going to be, like, the next five years he's going to be the dude. He better be with that contract. Yeah. I mean, I think that he could really, like, control the league for a few more years to come because he's – people don't realize how young he is. No, he's only, I think he's 28 years old. Yeah. That, I mean, that's when players get into the into their prime. Yeah. How old is Machado? Remember, him and Machado are – He's around the same years. age. Huh? He's around the same age. Oh, yeah. I think Machado's, like – is he, like, the same – I thought he was, like, 30. No, he's either 28 or 29. Okay. How about players going to be 30? Brad, what? Judge getting old on us, man. He's going to be 30 this year. Yeah, I know. That is the downfall, Judge. That is so, is like, 30 this year? Yeah. I think he won the rookie of the year, like, four or five years ago. I it's because they called just... him up so late. Yeah. He was nearly 26 when they called him up. I mean, the dude didn't play baseball until he was 18. Exactly. <laughs> He went out and broke a fucking record. Yeah, I mean, like, he 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 was 18 when he started playing baseball, and then Soto has like a 400 on base percentage at, in the major leagues at the age of 19. Yeah, that's just crazy. So I don't know if Soto is actually this good. Like his stance is so weird, and he just puts barrel on ball every time. So does a stud. Yes. All right, Alex. Any more topics you want to talk about? Uh, there was, what was I going to talk about? Oh, oh, I just wanted to bring up something that just popped in my head. During the 2019 ALCS, I don't remember which game it was. Cole was warming up in the bullpen before the start. People were absolutely, this is in Yankee Stadium, keep in mind, absolutely hassling him, saying stuff about his wife. They probably ate those words after that offseason. But uh, oh, yeah. if I'm going to be honest here, I'm starting to hate Cole. No, I'm not. <laughs> I just don't know what to expect. He's their best pitcher, bro. He's their best pitcher, but I'm not. I don't want to have to. The Yankees have to pay him thirty-six million dollars a year. You can only be good with using Spider Tack. He had a good year, man. I'm. Not, he did, but was it worth thirty-six million dollars a year? No. I don't know. I mean, sometimes you just need to pay a lot of money for like a consist a player that you know is going to be good. Yeah, if you're if you're paying thirty six million for for someone who comes, what did he come in second in the Cy Young? I gotta say, yeah, that was we paid him also right after his best year, so that's fine. I mean, that's like that's a good that's a good signing. That wasn't like obviously you want him to like win the MVP or something like that, but I mean, he's like uh, that was a great year. I mean, yeah, not not as good as the his twenty nineteen with the Astros, but. I was, how was uh, when Cole threw that uh, complete game shutout against the Astros? How, oh, yeah. How were you feeling then, Liam? That pissed this, me off. This year. Yeah. That really made me angry. Starting to miss him after that? No. I don't, I don't, I'm not going to get hung up on something like that. But, uh, yeah, that, that made me angry. I remember, I remember that game. I remember they were going to take him out, and he told him no. He was yelling at Aaron Boone. He's like, he, no, he didn't right. just tell him no. He probably threatened Boone's livelihood. If you take me out, <laughs> I will ruin your life. I will make – I will cancel you, boy. Get the hell back in that life. Now, now are, you also have to remember, the Astros got the revenge on us. We were up 8-3 in, like, the ninth inning, and we fucking lost. Okay, that's now. because Chad Green can't close a game to save his ass, so. How is that, that the greatest – that was the greatest thing I ever watched. De- bro, was that, was that ninth inning. After I saw that they were down by one remote, I'm gone. Dude, Dude it, the, the Yankees are notorious for, like, blowing games in the ninth inning up, up by, like, one or more runs. There was no such thing as the Yankees winning by six or more runs last year, unless yeah. you count those two games against the Orioles. Every, <laughs> every win was by two runs. Every win. And those games, by two, one or two runs... They played like 2019 Yankees, okay? Yeah. But any time before that, if it wasn't by one or two runs, playing like the Kansas City Royals out here. Yeah. Anything else? So uh, is, is Aaron, Aaron Boone's coming back next year? 
sadly. Uh, yeah. I, I've said this in the last episode. I, I kind of made it as a joke. I'm just going to make it say it one more time. You know, bring Boone out 2018, finish second place still. But hey, 100 wins. Okay, that's cool. Nice job, Boone. 2019, 103 wins. All right. What happened in 2020? Huh? <laughs> what happened in 2021? <laughs> what? The Yankees, it might have not been Boone. It might have been like the, the a minor coaching staff. So this year we did just like, I don't know, I don't know if we let go or like they were like free agents or whatever, but we did sign a lot of new coaches this year. So that might make a new difference. We did. But what happened to our oh so, I mean, I get the lockdown happened before the lockdown, lockout. What happened to our oh so monstrous offseason where we're going out getting everybody, right? Right, 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 Hal? What happened, man? No, that's what Brian Cashman said. Oh. Didn't Hal Steinbrenner <laughs> said they're open to all options? No, no, that was uh, a. All right. Cashman. Steinbrenner, Cashman, whoever it is, both of them are corrupt and I hate both of them. So, you know. And we all know that the Ashers, they do have a way better, better coaching staff than us, including their pitch. Yeah. Holy shit. Well, we, we, we just, pitch, we coach just, just tell them to keep it up. Brent Strom. Brent Strom's gone. Who? Oh. Brent Strom, he's gone. What was he like? He was our pitching coach. Oh, that Best, hurt. Pitching, coach, best pitch. pitching coach I've ever seen in my life. Did he sign with another team or did he just leave? I think he's going to the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks? Yeah. Uh, but, I mean, to be fair – Someone, the person who's taking over is, is was like his assistant. So, I mean, he had to have learned like a bunch of stuff from Brent Strom. I mean, I, I'm not really that concerned about it. Yeah. Hey, you know who I just remember was on the Astros? Fuck, what the hell's his name? That, right. Hector Rondon. I just remember him. Yeah. What happened to that guy? I don't think he, does he even pitch anymore? I don't know. All I know is he used to throw crazy hard and he was a good reliever. Yeah, he was, a, he was all right. But the big thing is that we, we had Roberto Osuna. He got injured, though, didn't he? No, no he, uh, he had some uh, questionable things off the field. Yeah, so, yeah. I mean, that was before that was before we had him. But he just had way too much controversy around him. And then he, 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 he did get injured, though. And that's why he's been out. And I he could have played this year. And I think he's just been, like, training. But I think he might make a signing this year. What the happened was before that? Let's no, talk about the Astros, but with someone else. Let's talk about when Ken Giles was the closer. Dude, <laughs> that was the best moment watching as a Yankee fan. You see, Sam just had a new golf of him, rounding the base, and then he just walked to the dugout throwing a hissy fit. Yeah, that was 2018, Sanchez, though. So that was well deserved, that punch. Yeah. <laughs> that was the most embarrassing thing. <laughs> Let's be. Like, during the regular season, the Yankees always had the Astros number. But the postseason, that's a completely different story. Well, yeah. think about the Astros last year. They're not even 500, made, made the postseason, and then wound up getting to the LCS losing game seven or whatever. Game six, whatever. All right, I'm going to say this. won that if Altuve didn't make so many errors. Yeah, I was about to say, Altuve kind of sunk that shit. Yeah. What do you guys think about the Hector Neris signing? The who? The Hector Neris signing. You guys signed Hector Neris? Yep. That's a – here's what you're going to get out of Hector Neris. You're going to either get someone who has a decent fastball and a really good splitter, or you're going to get someone who throws splitters down the middle and gives up Dude, home runs. He's time. literally like a Ryan Stanek who you signed before. And it exactly. kind of worked out, to be honest. Stanek's a stud. Stanek yeah. – no, Stanek is actually better – because Naris, you're either getting a splitter or a fastball, but Naris has a, you know, he can throw in a slider too. Like, he doesn't just have two pitches. Well, yeah, Stanek's good. And uh, we we just lost Brooks Raley, which sucks because he was pretty good. He's he a lefty, actually, right? I used to hate him, and then he really started to be good. We lost him, so we need some lefty pieces. And you guys know Phil Maton? Yeah. He's a beast in the postseason. That dude was so good this year, and so I'm excited to have him. I think we have him under team control to like 2023. So, what was I gonna say? who was in your closure this year? Presley. Presley. Oh yeah, that's right. I was completely forgetting about him. I don't know why. Presley's incredible. So good. He's kind of yeah. forgetful because he doesn't throw 100 miles per hour. For slider, he's like the na- one of the nasty sliders in the league. Not just one of the nastiest. He throws it crazy hard. Yeah, and he's got that sweeping curve. That pitch is disgusting in the show. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, we had Graveman, but he's going to the White Sox. 
Yeah, Graven was a good pickup by you guys. Yeah, but I wasn't expecting to keep him for another year, so I didn't really care. Yeah, you probably just want to win a World Series this year and give him away, basically. So the White Sox now have Liam Hendricks, Ryan Tapera, Craig Kimbrell, and Garrett Crochet. Well, isn't Kimbrell a free agent? Isn't it? No. Like well, he actually, I don't know. They signed a big he... year, so I don't know. They didn't sign a trade for him. Oh, yeah, that's right, yeah. He might have already re-signed to a different team. I don't know. Oh, no, I I'm glad Robbie Ray is out of this division. So am I, dude, but he... Y- y'all can deal with him for the next couple of years. I don't care. Yeah, Liam, now you have to deal with uh, Robbie Ray. I don't yeah. know. Actually, speaking of Robbie Ray, I don't think he's going to have as good as a year. No Probably way. Not. I mean, maybe with those new mechanics, he just turns into, like, Cy Young, the next Cy Young, like a lefty Cy Young. I don't know. Think that covers it all? Like yeah, I kept it short and sweet today, I guess. It's the shortest yeah. video yet. We just wanted to say how, basically... 2017, we're kind of pissed off, and now we now we forgive now we forgive the players. And, and we can't the, hate you guys as much as we hate the Red Sox, okay? Yeah. One yeah, thing you need to remember: if you got to blame someone, blame that cocksucker AJ Hinch. That's Wait, it. Who, who even was your general manager? Do you know? Uh, Jeff Lunau. Not heard of him. But he actually was a good GM because he made some pretty good signings. So. Yeah, he was all right. I mean, uh, the guy we have now is really good. He was the he was the VP uh, of like baseball operations for the Rays, and the Rays yeah. know how to do baseball. Yeah, the Rays somehow their team wasn't even good. Like their their team is average. It's like G Man Choi. Now it's better since they got a what's the face, Wander Franco, and Nelson Cruz. But uh, their team was average, and somehow they made it to the World Series. I don't even know how they did that. Too nice, dude. Their whole team is just like collectively like good. They don't. They didn't have any like crazy standout players, but they're just teams like collectively a good team. Bro, I thought was just... Morn and Snell left. I thought that was it. Honestly, their bullpen is the best bullpen of baseball. People do not realize that. Yeah, they traded yeah. away two of their best relievers. <laughs> well, they still have Kit Ridge, don't they? No, I'm talking about Jose Alvarado and Diego Castillo. Oh. He wasn't even that good. I mean, he had a one point something in the ERA, but now he, what team is he even on now? Who? Jose Alvarado. He was the Phillies. He yeah. isn't even good anymore. I wouldn't say that. He's pretty good. Not as good, though. Yeah. I mean, to, to be, you guys got to realize, like, the 2021 Astros, by, like, the time we made the postseason, our bullpen was, like, unstoppable. That was one of the nicest bullpens in the game last year. Our problem was just our starting pitching, especially when Lance McCullough got injured. Yeah. Yeah. And, wait, wait, Alex, you know what I forgot? Did Tommy King even pitch this year with the Dodgers? Maybe in the minors, but not to – I think he was injured. Why, why didn't he pitch in the majors? I think he was injured. Yeah, um, it's Tommy John. Oh, I actually totally forgot about that. Yeah. I missed that guy. He was a nice changeup guy. And nice changeup. Change that was the best changeup I've ever seen. All right. I think that's what? That that's the, that's the, that's the best changeup you've ever seen. Well, like the best changeup I've ever seen is Trevor Hoffman. Yeah. You've never seen Trevor Hoffman pitch. And I, please oh, be I'm talking about highlights. Oh, I thought you, I thought you, I'm talking about the pit, like, live. Like, that plays today. Uh, Tommy Canley still is not the best change of Out of the bullpen, yeah. I don't know. I, I think we'd have to do some research before we talk about this more. Yeah. All right, then that concludes uh, the, the uh, topic for today. Yeah. Astros 2022 World Series champions. Slow it down. Uh, Slow it down. I, yeah. I actually do want to see Yankees Astros in the LCS, though. That would be a good matchup. Who knows? We may hopefully come out on top this time. Yeah. Yeah. All right. All right. See you next year, kid. See ya. See ya.